Hey Rebel Riser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So, one of the most remarkable things that the Clone Conspiracy does, that's episode 7 from season 2 of The Bad Batch, is focus on clone officers, not on clone troopers. I mean, tell me honestly, when you think of clones, the first thing that you think of is very likely the clone trooper helmet, right? Like, that's what we think of when we think of clones. Even if you're thinking of Rex or Cody or any of your other favorite clones, it's very likely that you're thinking of clone troopers. Now, there's never been a published number for how many clones were actually created by the Kaminoans over the course of the Clone Wars, the number that we have in Legends in the Republic Commando series by Karen Travis says that they've created three million clones to fight. Doesn't necessarily say whether these were just troopers or whether it's all encompassing, but you have to imagine that for the millions of clone troopers that they produced, they would have also had to create millions of additional clones in support roles and in crewing roles like the bridge officers that we meet in the Clone Conspiracy. So that's one way that season two of The Bad Batch is doing some remarkable things with its storytelling. Another has to do with the fact that Star Wars encompasses all genres, or space opera, I guess, is able to encompass all genres, and they are leaning into that by doing a pair of episodes that are all about political intrigue and suspense, and I have to say, that scene toward the end of the episode where Senator Tucci and Slip are meeting, and we know that the bounty hunter, or the assassin, I should say, Clone X, is targeting them, the suspense ramp up for when Clone X would start taking shots was crazy. As I was watching the episode, just my tension level rising because he was not shot at. Slip wasn't shot at nearly as quickly as I was expecting. So the longer that scene went on, the longer my anticipation built. And it was just shocking, basically, how amazingly patient they were with letting that scene play out. A third thing that they're doing very well, which is on display in The Clone Conspiracy, is the combination of world building that's happening along with connections to previous storytelling in such a way that it's not really done in a fan service kind of capacity. For example, Slip and Cade, the two primary clones here, have never appeared in other Star Wars storytelling, and for that matter, pretty much every new clone that's been introduced to us is a brand new clone. I think there was one that had a, a brief history marker somewhere, but it was really comparatively minimal. Planets that we've been introduced to are comparatively unknown, Ord Mantell obviously being an exception, Coruscant certainly, but as we've gone to you know, various missions and whatnot, a lot of this has been brand new stuff. And when they bring in characters that we know, it tends to be for very good reasons and also kind of deep cut sorts of things. So Bail Organa was sort of an obvious choice to appear in the situation naturally, and a well-known character certainly, but Senator Chuchi is a comparative deep cut from the Clone Wars, and Senator Butoni is as well. Also, as we mentioned on Thursday's show, the fact that they set part of this episode at 79, which is the clone bar that we saw in the other conspiracy story arc back in season six of the Clone Wars. Another very cool deep cut touch. It's the kind of Easter egg that rewards fans who are really deeply into these things, but still also is very logical and consistent for storytelling purposes. Then one more thing. <laughs> It's something that ties into something that Larry Kasdan said about The Force Awakens, about how the plot basically moves along like a freight train. I'm paraphrasing, but that's the gist of it. And when you have a plot that's moving along at such a fast clip and being so engaging and suspenseful, then you can kind of jump over plot holes and it's not necessarily a big deal. In this particular case with the clone conspiracy, the fact that Senator Chuchi is able to find Slip while Slip is on the run isn't really explained. There's no communication that happens between them, no rendezvous set up, so that's just kind of interesting. And also, how Slip is able to contact Rex. We don't necessarily get an explanation anywhere that clones are walking around with Rex's number in their head saying, oh yeah, I know that there's a clone out there who if things go wrong, like I've got his digits and I can call him up. So how Slip managed to get 
Rex's communication frequency or anything like that, eh, we don't really know. But when you've got things humming along on all cylinders, like the storytellers of the Bad Batch have going on right now, stuff like that is easy to dismiss because the storytelling is just so great. So that's what I've got for you on the deeper dive into the clone conspiracy, and that is going to do it for this episode of the podcast. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Seven is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.